Let's get her out of there. Oh, oh okay. no, God. It's Jesus. She's seizing. What is that rash? It's got multiple circular areas of erythema, some with central clearing. It could be consistent with something known as erythema multiforme. House MD, season one, episode five. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does, finally, as a doctor working in the UK. No time to waste. Doctor, something's wrong. Sister, you're having an asthma attack. I need you to relax. I'm giving you epinephrine. It's probably an allergic reaction. Get a nurse, please. She's got no pulse. Damn, so she came in with a rash on her hands, was given an antihistamine, diagnosed with an asthma attack, and now given adrenaline, which isn't even a treatment for an asthma attack, and gone into cardiac arrest. It's not Sister's Day. Now they were saying that they had this whole new delivery of pots and pans that Sister cleaned before she got the rash. Um, I, I wonder where that delivery came from. Was it contaminated with a heavy metal like lead or cadmium or an actual toxin like anthrax, poison ivy or aconitum? which is also known as Devil's Helmet, it would match the theme nicely. Let's get some more clues. Notice how I ignore the cardiac arrest because I know she will get revived. The patient at the start always lives. Results from the CBC didn't indicate an infection. Could be inflammation of the blood vessel. Vasculitis? That wouldn't give you an elevated eosifenol count. Cherry Strauss vasculitis would. Order a chest CT and start the cyst around prednisone, 40 milligrams TID. Everyone thinks how screwed up here and gave the patient too much epinephrine. Now Cuddy's given him 24 hours to figure out what caused the arrest. Otherwise, she's gonna report him for malpractice for the first time, even though we've already seen him run a paternity test without the patient's consent, break into people's houses, and conduct a clinical trial on sick babies' lives. You've gotta be a genius to get away with all of that. Now what do we do? Eosinophils are up, otherwise CBC's normal and he's got a high sed rate. Eosinophils are a special type of white blood cell named that way because eosin is a stain that turns very red when coming in contact with their cytoplasm. They're called a granulocyte because they have these cytotoxic chemicals that attack parasites after IgE antibodies attach to them. There are quite a few conditions that can cause high levels of eosinophils, but the most common is allergy. Others are like parasitic and fungal infections, adrenal conditions, skin disorders, toxins, autoimmune diseases, endocrine diseases, and tumors as well. That rolls it down just a little bit. So I would definitely want to know if there are pets in the nunnery, check Sister Augustine's hands for scabies, burrows, do stool tests for over cysts and parasites, note about recent travel, family history, bloods, including electrolytes, thyroid, autoimmune screen, including ANA, C anchor, P anchor for Chirk Stratch, which is now known as eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangiitis. Just rolls off the tongue. You always want to be a nun? My parents died when I was six. I was raised in a foster home run by the church. When I was 18, I went to the monastery where they let me take my vows. I find this scene so interesting because Chase has already said that he hates nuns and has flippantly indicated that they've got irrational views. Now he's seeing how they nurtured the girl who had no one, giving her a family. Even if he doesn't agree with their views, maybe now he'll see that they're actually doing some good in the world. I actually treated a nun once when I was working at Charing Cross Hospital. She was admitted with a chest infection, was one of the kindest people that I had met. I think that religion is generally a pretty convincing package for morality. Now, my smart people, I have a question for you. Can you list the four most common religions in order of when they were founded? I believe Sister Augustine has no vascular pathology, which means no Church Strauss. Please, the smell. Let's get her out of there. Oh, oh okay. no, God. It's Jesus. She's seizing. <laughs> what is that rash? It's got multiple circular areas of erythema, some with central clearing. It could be consistent with something known as erythema multiforme. 
The most common cause of that is herpes infection. Now herpes simplex infection of the brain or encephalitis usually affects the temporal lobes that can produce abnormal smells like burning rubber, then spread to the rest of the brain causing a generalized seizure. That could be why she has a seizure, the rash, the weird smells, and cause the high levels of eosinophils in rare cases as well. But if she has herpes, Sister Augustine has not been doing the Catholic kind of roaming. Nobody's perfect. But if you have the perfect series and episode that you want me to react to, then check out the channel membership. It helps me a lot. And for a limited time only, we have our Hall of Fame, which is the top 10 first members that join the channel. There are six spots left open. So if you join now, you can secure a place. The earlier you join, the faster I'll be able to react to a episode of your choice. So press the join button below to get involved. Patient tested positive for herpetic encephalitis. The system is severely compromised. Mixed connective tissue disease. It did explain why she was feeling better on the prednisone. Swollen hands, pulmonary problems, cardiac problems, it all fit. Okay, I'm pretty happy that I figured out herpes and encephalitis because of her rash. I will take that. What could be causing her immunosuppression house? She has one sexually transmitted infection. If only there were another sexually transmitted infection of the viral type that causes immunodeficiency in humans. Could it be called HVI or VIH? Or maybe HIV? No, instead house, you think the most likely diagnosis is mixed connective tissue disease, a two in a hundred thousand disease that is a mixture of lupus, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, scleroderma, and rheumatoid. You can't give prednisolone because it would make the brain infection worse. Tough catch-22 situation here, which is why House has now chosen to put her in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber instead. There's been some evidence that a hyperbaric oxygen chamber can reduce inflammation, but nothing more convincing than a dongle telemarketer. Situations like this with where you get caught without being able to use a treatment option because of another condition are the hardest cases. I once had a patient who had both heart failure and kidney failure and the medications to dry them out to treat the heart failure would have worsened the kidney problems. It was a very tough situation. Sister Augustine went into foster care when she was six years old, but she left when she was 12. She got into drugs. When she was 15, she became pregnant local herbs. Wow, a lot to get through here. So Sister Augustine has had a wild past, became pregnant at 15, lost the child. House doesn't think it's relevant, but now this T has got his detective senses tingling. One reason why House could be on to something is that certain types of tea, especially green tea, contain an anti-inflammatory compound known as polyphenols. If she were consuming large amounts of this, then it could explain why her immune system is suppressed in this episode, leading to her herpes encephalitis. House better get this right as he's already been kicked off the case by Cuddy and is in the firing line for screwing up the adrenaline dose at the start. The other thing is that there was an article in the 2013 Journal of Toxicology that examined 30 different off-the-counter tea brands and found unsafe levels of heavy metals in more than 73% of them. The main toxic contaminant was lead and lead can increase IgE levels and cause immunosuppression. If I've got that, that would be very good because this will be the first one that I've gotten right. Let's find out. Yes, yeah, she's getting worse. Lung function's deteriorating, but you went and and continuing to rise. She's starting to run a fever and the rash is spreading. It's a fig wort tea. The patient is getting worse, likely because of this figwort tea, interesting. If it is lead poisoning because of this, then they could do a blood test to check for heavy metal poisoning. And if it is positive, then chelation would help her a lot. That being said, those figwort tea seems to have some other effects like diuresis, which means passing a lot of urine. Not sure how that ties in here, but I hope that they find an answer because it sounds like she's going into kidney failure and sepsis. Great for that little pick-me-up we're all looking for in the morning. Unfortunately, if you then get injected with even 0.1 cc of epinephrine, instant cardiac arrest. All the rest of the symptoms can be explained by a severe long-term 
allergic reaction. Adrenaline after fig wheat tea causes cardiac arrest. This is about as real as a Kardashian knows. Fig wheat tea has a small amount of cardiac glycoside inside, but there are no known interactions between adrenaline and fig wheat or any medical basis why this could happen. Now they've used this to discount the cardiac arrest from the symptom list and now they've gone to severe long-term allergy. We haven't quite explained what this long-term allergy is to though. Maybe it's from her clothes or related to losing the child somehow. I'm out of ideas. We need to stabilize her, isolate her from all possible allergens, give her system a rest. Get her in a clean room. Okay, and we'll gradually introduce the allergens and see how she responds. You should be feeling better here. You may be wondering how there's a random clean room on an infectious diseases and nephrology run department. And you'd be right to ask that question. But I used to work on an infectious diseases department and we had negative isolated ventilation rooms for tuberculosis patients to try and isolate them and prevent contamination. So just add in some silk sheets, some hypoallergenic soap and voila, you have a clean room. All right, it's not quite that simple, but plausible. The idea here is that she could improve, but if she's still unwell in this room, then that means whatever is causing her allergy is probably in her body rather than the outside world. I don't want to die. I was in seminary school. Your faith is being tested. This fire tests skull and purifies it. He hasn't left you. What? Chase was in seminary school. I was not expecting that curveball. It would explain though why he has such strong feelings against nuns. I love this genuine moment though between him and the patient. Reminds me of a 45 year old patient of mine with metastatic ovarian cancer who believed she had cursed her son. Her son was so misbehaved when he was younger and at one point she said that one day you're gonna get a child who makes you suffer as much as I did. Now, when her grandson was born, he was severely disabled by autism and she felt that she was the one that caused that and is now being punished with her cancer as a result. I listened, understood her frame of reference and even without agreeing with it, I used it to help her realize that she wasn't being punished, that she hadn't cursed her son. Sometimes painkillers or medication isn't what the patient needs, it's simply a shift in perspective. She was very grateful for the chat. Need some help in here. Who's the procedure? She's in anaphylactic shock. 0.1 cc, Betty. She's about to intubate. Breathing stabilized. Okay, she's having an acute anaphylactic reaction in a clean room, which means either this is an allergic anaphylaxis or it's that the allergen is on or in her. There is a condition called recurrent idiopathic anaphylaxis, which is caused by a non-immune mediated release of histamine. Or in the alternate option, if the allergen is in her, it could be from a tattoo, an old bullet wound that's stuck inside her from the street, or a contraceptive implant, or coil. Although I'm not sure why she'd need it if she's not sexually active anymore. Let's see. She's requested to check out against medical advice. They're running away. Ran away from the monastery. Get laid. Don't be an idiot. House is the definition of tough love, but he needs to pick up Chase's pieces here. After he implanted the thought in her that this was a test, she came to the conclusion that God's inside her. And so if it's a test, it doesn't matter whether she's in hospital or in the monastery, so she might as well leave. You see, having faith is totally all right, but it's when it starts to put your life in danger, then we may have to intervene. If this patient were on my unit, I would be inclined to say that she doesn't have the capacity to make the decision to go home. There's a big difference between being religious and putting yourself in harm's way intentionally. Anyways, let's find out if I was right about this allergy. I was on every kind of birth control known to man and I still got pregnant. He has God inside her. Maybe she's allergic to God. Order a full body scan. The failure rate of having two types of contraception that both don't work is less than one in 10,000, even less with three. Being a teen mom can have some serious impact, but if she believes it was fate that God made it happen, then why get rid of the baby? Talking about teen pregnancy, the average rate in the UK is 
15 in a thousand, but that's falling now thanks to less youth unemployment and better education. I guess it's also hard to get pregnant if you're scrolling through TikTok all day. Now it also seems like House thinks the allergen is inside her as well. And I can hear that Eureka music playing. We know that she tried to self-abort, so maybe it is a contraceptive device that's been there all this time. I'm very excited to find out. Are you excited? I'm excited. What is that? A copper cross form of birth control pulled off the market in the 80s. So she's allergic to copper. So all we have to do is remove the IUD. What? I finally got one right. She had an IUD that was causing prolonged allergy. Doesn't quite make sense though. How it was triggered even though it was in there for all of those years. The abortion was 20 years before. Hopefully it's explained. Oh my god, I can't believe first ever Diagnosis, I got right. I'll take that. Prolonged exposure to an allergen with minimal symptoms. But at some point, all it takes is one last contact to cause a full-blown reaction. The first time I got the rash was when I was washing the copper cookware. Okay, medically it is a stretch, but it is plausible. See, the kidney failure could be explained by allergic interstitial nephritis or recurrent hypotension because of anaphylaxis that she seems to be getting quite commonly. The respiratory problems could be hypersensitivity, pneumonitis related, which is a type of allergic reaction leading to chronic respiratory disease. It can be triggered by lots of things, including mold, animal fur, pigeon droppings, even poorly uh, maintained ventilations. And usually the prognosis is seven to 10 years because after scarring develops, it causes a positive feedback loop of inflammation that just gets worse. And that is very difficult to stop. But it seems like God is with our patients. So maybe she survives for a little bit longer. Dr. House found his miracle. Celebrate and be glad because your brother was dead and is alive again. You did good with the nun. Congratulations. Oh, music to House's ears, especially after he got taken off the case. Now, there was also a Christmas part to this episode, but it is currently March. So it would be very bad luck for me to react to that side. For any raging Santa fans among you, I apologize for nothing. Now it's my turn to diagnose you. Seems like you have a house reaction deficiency. Oh look, treat yourself over here. I'm Sarah Med. stay curious, Merry March.